きましたの徳富だ守った守ったそして落ちた Hello everyone and welcome back to TSN or the Sasuke Nerds I'm your host Evan and today I want to introduce a new concept to the channel and that is the winners and losers of Sasuke 41 Now what do I mean by this? I chose five different people for each category that I felt have won or lost in Sasuke 41. Sasuke 41 was a tournament of all time, but this was an incredibly fun video to make and to come up with the list for each. These lists are not ordered, but note that some people won or lost more than others. Anyways, let's begin. Winner number one Yuta Yamashita. Yuta Yamashita made his second appearance on Sasuke this tournament, with his first appearance being back in Sasuke 32, where he was cut from the broadcast but made it to the music box. He competed alongside Konan Shimizu as a part of the Sasuke circles of their respective universities. And while Shimizu failed the fishbone, Yamashita essentially came out of nowhere to clear stage 1 and stage 2, absolutely dominating both stages. In stage 3, he made it all the way to the second transition of the cliffhanger dimension. With him being 26, he still has a ton of potential left on the table, and I cannot wait to see his return in Sasuke 42. Loser number 1 Yusuke Morimoto. Now, this might be a bit of a controversial take, and I can see why some might disagree with this. Yusuke tied with two others for the best result of the tournament. How could he be a loser? Well, think about this. The vertical limit burst basically stopped Yusuke from waltzing to a third Kanzen Seiha. Now, you think that he, or someone else, will end up building an obstacle like with anything else that is on Sasuke, right? Well, according to director Masato Inui, it's not that simple. He has been on record saying that, try as you might, you cannot 100% replicate the obstacle. Even in some of the replicas that were already built, They do look a bit sketchy. Now, if there is one thing that Yusuke isn't good at, it is adapting on the fly. Look at his Sasuke 39 run, for example. The rain messed with his concentration, and you can tell that he was rattled. Jury is still out as to whether this will fully prevent Yusuke from winning a third time, but for now, he definitely lost this tournament. Winner number two Wasabi. This was Wasabi's third appearance on Sasuke, with his previous two tournaments ending in tragic fashion on the Dragon Glider. After missing out on Sasuke 40, Wasabi was back, and not only did he clear the Dragon Glider along with the rest of the stage, but he also clears Stage 2. He even gave Stage 3 a good attempt, making it to the Cliffhanger Dimension. With this result, he enters the upper echelon of the celebrity competitors, and considering that this is already the golden era of celebrity competitors, that is no small feat. I hope Wasabi can continue to build on this result and go even further into the course in Sasuke 42. Loser number two Hayato Takasuka. Hayato Takasuka was entering his second tournament after his stage two appearance in the previous tournament, ending on the Spire Walk. Or run. Considering that he is a member of the Black Tigers, along with Yoshiyuki Yamamoto and Yuta Nakashima, who both turned in respectable performances this tournament, Takasuka's expectations were to improve on his performance in Sasuke 40 and possibly reach stage 3. However, he ended up failing the Rolling Hills Ascent. Upon closer inspection, it looks like he bangs his knee and it threw him off just enough to fall back into the water. Definitely a freak accident for sure, but considering how the other two black tigers did, it sticks out like a sore thumb. I hope Takasuka can redeem himself in the next tournament. Winner number three Ryosuke Miyaoka. Like with Yamashita, Miyaoka came out of nowhere this tournament, especially to casual viewers, to have one of the best rookie performances by a Japanese competitor that we have ever seen. Now, Mia Oka was someone that has gained some attention in the community prior to the tournament, as it was discovered that he was the person running stages 1 and 2 in those GoPro YouTube videos during Sasuke 35 and Sasuke 40. While his Sasuke 35 runs were a little lackluster, he cleared both stages on the Sasuke 40 course. 
He's been wanting to get on Sasuke for quite some time now, and he finally got his chance this tournament. And he didn't disappoint. Tying for the best result of the tournament with established competitors Kaitaro Yamamoto and Yusuke Morimoto, failing the second yellow zone of the vertical limit burst. I really hope we can see more of Miyaoka in future tournaments, as he is around the age of the rest of the Morimoto Kunsadai and Yoshiyuki Yamamoto among other competitors, and has a ton of potential. Loser number 3. The Former Johnny's Members When I refer to the former Johnny's members, I am talking about Rine Sugeda, Ryoichi Sukada, and Hikaru Iwamoto. Each of these three competitors has had success in previous tournaments, each of them making it to stage 2 at least twice. However, this tournament wasn't too kind to of them. Sugeta shockingly went out on the Silk Slider, one of two competitors to fail at this tournament. However, he didn't fail the obstacle itself. He tripped on the bridge to the fishbone and touched the water. Sukata and Iwamoto did better, however both of them failed the new Twin Diamonds. This was especially a tough pill for Iwamoto and Sugeta to swallow because if you remember from the previous tournament, both of them had the bar derail on the Dragon Glider and couldn't advance because of it. Seeing both of them, and by extension Sukata, go out even before the Dragon Glider was pretty surprising. Here's to hoping each of them come back stronger than ever for Sasuke 42. Winner number 4, Kayu Nagano. I feel like this is pretty self-explanatory. I was originally going to put Yuta Nakashima here too, but I feel like his result was expected after his run on Sasuke 40. In the previous tournament, Kayu kind of embarrassed himself by failing the rolling hill, but he and his dad, the legendary Makoto Nagano, worked their tails off in time for Sasuke 41. In the videos posted on the official Sasuke YouTube channel, Kayu definitely looked a lot stronger, but performing in training and performing under the lights are completely different, so we waited in anticipation. Kayu in 40 and Kayu in 41 seemed like completely different people as Kayu went the distance and cleared stage 1. What really made this special was how Nagano reacted, acting like any proud father would, which was a super nice moment. Even though Kayu's stage 2 run was short lived, it was no secret that Kayu definitely won this tournament. Loser number 4, Daisuke Matsuda. Now I know what you might be thinking, how can someone lose in Sasuke 41 if they didn't compete? Well, let me explain. Matsuda is not the only competitor to have a super sophisticated backyard course, with another one being rookie for this tournament, Shuzo Uchimiya, or you may know him by the name, Gio. After Matsuda's retirement in the previous tournament, it was assumed that Gio would take his place. Now, Matsuda has competed for 9 tournaments, but never managed to break through Stage 1. In Gio's first tournament, he ends up clearing Stage 1 and was just short of clearing Stage 2, while having most of the same obstacles as Matsuda does at his course. Gio's success is definitely an honorable mention for the winners, but it's not the best look for Matsuda when someone who has a course that is comparable to yours did what you couldn't on his first try. That being said, I do wish Matsuda nothing but the best in his retirement and I really appreciate his impact by giving many competitors a course to train on who may not have the resources to do so themselves. Winner number 5, Brett Sims. Like with Matsuda, I feel like a casual viewer might be confused on how Brett Sims is a winner here, since he didn't compete in the tournament. There was a modification to the vertical limit this tournament, called the vertical limit burst. After the tournament, Brett Sims made a post on his Instagram page that he built a rotating vertical limit, and doesn't it look familiar? Considering the fact that Brett Sims has been around Ninja since the early days of Ninja Warrior on G4, this has to be one of the biggest accomplishments that anyone can have in Ninja. Going to compete on Sasuke like Daniel Gill did this year is an incredible accomplishment by itself, but an obstacle you invented ended up on the show? Words cannot express how happy I am for him. Keep up the good work, man. Loser number 5, the Sasuke All-Stars. I wanted to give this spot to just Makoto Nagano, given his result in the tournament, however, Considering Kaiyu's clear, 
I feel like I couldn't completely put Nagano here, because seeing your own son accomplish something like that, you win in your own way. However, I decided to include the other All-Stars here too. Obviously Nagano's result was the worst of the tournament, but Shingo's result wasn't much better. After clearing stage 1 last time, Shingo ended up choking on the rolling hill in an embarrassing way. Now, I know Shingo has had some stupid fails over the course of his career, and this is definitely one of them, but I do not think that he'd fail the rolling hill of all obstacles. It feels weird that in the year of our lord 2023, that 58-year-old Katsumi Yamada, who hasn't cleared stage 1 since the Stone Age, had the undisputed best result of the All-Stars for the first time since Sasuke 10. Even then, Yamada had a decent run all things considered, but he ended up failing the Twin Diamonds. Needless to say, this was not the best moment for the Sasuke All-Stars, to put it lightly. So those were 5 competitors I felt won, and 5 competitors I felt lost in Sasuke 41. With me only limiting it to 5 per category, I am bound to be missing people. If you disagree, feel free to express your opinions in the comments section. I look forward to the discussion that may come from this video. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, until next time on TSN. But before you leave, we have an announcement to make. Please, take a look. September 19th, 2007. Sasuke is about to air its 19th tournament. It's a sunny day at the Midoriyama lot and a hundred contestants are eager to take on the renewed course. There's a fair bit of optimism in the air, as the results of the previous tournament just six months prior surprised many, as we had three people make it deep into the third stage, despite this renewal being marketed as the one that would see all 100 competitors failing stage one. And with most of the top competitors at the time being in the prime of their careers, considered unstoppable on the course, nobody had any reason to believe this wouldn't be anything more than a standard, competitive, and exciting tournament of Sasuke. Something was wrong here. We were 78 runs into the course, and nobody had even cleared the first stage yet. Only two people came even close, and notable competitors such as Sasuke 18 Stage 2 competitor Takamasa Nagasaki, American representative Brett Sims, and a little-known competitor named Yusuke Morimoto all failed on the first stage. The atmosphere has begun to shift from one of nonchalance and excitement to one of worry and nervousness. We have not seen this amount of runs without a clear since Sasuke 6 with 82. We did get our breakthrough eventually though, as veteran firefighter Koji Yamada became our first clear. And better yet, up next after him was gas station manager and all-star Shingo Yamamoto, a man who has cleared this same stage 12 times before, and to follow was the rest of the all-stars, the hero of Inba, Bumpei Shiratori, Mr. Sasuke, Katsumi Yamada, firefighter Toshihiro Takeda, and of course, the Kompir Amaru captain himself, Makoto Nagano. Of course, there's other stars, such as Kenji Takahashi and Shinsuke Nagasaki, both stage 3 finalists last time. Surely they would save the day and make this tournament continue their dominance. What happened to the Sasuke All-Stars? Who are these people? How did we get here?